In this episode, I hope to take a Photoshop tutorial of a classy pencil icon and adapt that to Inkscape version 0.46. Although I'm not a Photoshop user and never have been, I can appreciate some of the tools inside of the application that make it easy for artists to capture their design intent rather quickly. I'm sure Inkscape will keep maturing to the point where it will adopt some similar tools to those found in other graphic applications, but until it does, we'll have to work with what we have. Inkscape still has plenty to offer, so basically where there's a will, there's a way. I want to be sure to thank the original author and artist, Aaron Goxel, and I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I do tend to slaughter names uh, for posting his tutorial on uh, psdtoots.com, a fabulous resource of inspiration for artwork. PSD Toots is one of my favorite websites and uh, they seem to display some rather brilliant artwork. There are many authors there that I respect so be sure to drop by and check out their content. Uh, once there just do a search for a super shiny pencil icon uh, and you can also do a search for uh, Aaron. Uh, he has some other artwork but it's uh, this uh, tutorial here that we're going to try to mimic. Okay, So I hope that's okay with PSD Toots. Uh, for providing some inspiration for us. So let's go ahead and get started with the tutorial. Okay, the first thing that I'm going to do is bring in one of the PSD Toots uh, images and I hope it's okay that I kind of pinched it from their website. Um, what I wanted to do was uh, not actually use the image for anything other than trying to uh, get a gradient of this uh, area right here. Okay, so we're going to zoom in on this and I don't want to draw a rectangle. I actually want to do a zoom, so let's grab the right tool. And in things like Photoshop and GIMP, making this gradient is rather simple with just by changing the level uh, of the gradient. Well, we don't have things like that in uh, in Inkscape, so we're going to use on canvas uh, gradient editing to try to mimic the same thing. So what I'm going to do is draw a rectangle <clears throat> and I'll just chew this up. We'll make this about 58 pixels high and I'll make it about 60 wide. Okay, and we'll put it about right there. Alright, now what we're going to do is we're going to go to our gradient icon and I'm going to make sure that I have the linear gradient uh, selected and I'll just double click on the rectangle to turn it into a gradient. And I'm going to change this gradient here by making it vertical. And I'm going to change the bottom, we'll change it to a little lighter uh, color so it's not transparent. Okay. Now, let me zoom in on this a little bit more. Go ahead and let it fill up our screen. Okay, we'll get back into our gradient editor. Basically what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to double click on this line to add more gradient stops, color stops. Okay, and I'm going to try to do that by lining it up to each color change in this gradient over here. Okay, so I have a color change here. So what I'm going to do is double click on my line to add a stop. I see one here. I'll do I'll do that on this side. One here. One here, and this one's kind of a big one. So I'm going to make it. I'm going to extend it. I'll add a gradient here. Here. Here and here. Okay and I'll show you where I'm going with this okay and it doesn't quite matter if you don't line it up uh, basically you can just uh, get your colors on here and and move these stops where you want them okay so we're gonna select our first stop and we're gonna use our color picker and we're gonna touch it up here on this raster image so we can get our stop to have the same color and I'm gonna do that for each one of these picking my color choose your and just changing the color. We go back to our gradient, color picker, and I'll just go down through here and do the whole thing. And 
I'll, I'll go ahead and skip one so I can get this one in here and I'll come back to it. get our very last one and that one is almost white okay now what we need to do is do a little uh, we'll do some moving here and I'm just gonna try to center this up get it as close as we can yet not dwell on it for the for the screencast you can come in at any time and kind of true these things up and this one here is a little dark so what I'm going to do is pick this here and we'll move this up a little higher okay and if you think you got it right what you can do is just zoom out and take a look at it and see what it looks like zoomed out Okay, you can see that I have, this is a little high here, so I'll kind of lower that. And you can always take this and push it into the raster object a little bit and see how close you are. Don't quite have it right up here. I think what I'll do is add another stop. Try to go a little lighter. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You just I'm just trying to get this thing close. A little dark up here. Okay, and we'll zoom back out again and see where we are. Okay, and I think that's probably close enough. Okay, again, you can keep toying with it and uh, keep moving your stops until you get it perfect. I might adjust this gradient here just a little bit. Pull that down. But like I said, I don't want to dwell on it because I want to move the screencast along. So if you think that's pretty good, then. Uh, then we can stop there. I'm going to go ahead and pull that in. And I'm going to right click on this and duplicate it. Because I want to kind of get the same size here. Okay, now. Okay, now I don't need this uh, this image anymore. So I'm going to right click on it. Or I'm sorry, left click on it and delete it. And uh, again, I hope it was okay if I... Uh, kind of borrowed that image from PSD Toots. Uh, I do it out of good faith. Um, okay, so basically what we have here is our items. So uh, I'm going to move this over here and I'm going to right click on this, duplicate it. Right click on this one and we'll duplicate that. Okay. Now for this one here, I'm going to, whoops, I just want to draw that in a little bit for now, okay? Okay, so basically this will become our eraser, this will be our metal stamping around the pencil, this will be our actual pencil body, and then this will be the cone uh, of our pencil, okay? Take a swig of water here. <clears throat> All right, next we're going to draw an ellipse. And I'm going to make sure that this ellipse is 58 high. That was the height of these barrels down here. And I'm going to make it about 33.5 wide. Okay, I think that should probably be pretty good. And I'll make it kind of dark. <coughs> Excuse me. So that we can see it. And I'm going to zoom in on this. 
Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to select this. We'll select this option or uh, item here. I'll go to my Align and Distribute dialog. We'll do Last Selected, and I'll center up the centers here. Okay. Now holding the Control key down, I can kind of slide this where I want to slide it. Okay. Now what we need to do is we need to go to File, Document Properties, and I need to turn on some snap points. Okay, I'm going to go to the very last Snap Points tab, check my Rotation Center. I'll go to the Snap tab and check my Snap to Paths. Okay, now, <clears throat> excuse me, what that does is this circle here has a center point right in the middle. I want to drag this over and have it snap onto this edge so it's directly in the center. Okay, so holding my Control key down, there you can kind of see it snap. Okay, so that's what I want. I'm going to right click on this and duplicate. Snap one down on that end. And I'm going to duplicate this a few more times to get this ellipse onto these objects. So I'll duplicate this. Put one there. Duplicate this. Put one here. Duplicate this one. That there. Duplicate this one. Snap that there. We'll come over here and I'll duplicate this one. Okay. Now, I'm going to zoom in on this last barrel here and I'm going to pull this in just a little bit. Now, that might be too much. Again, holding the control key down. I'm just dragging it in. There we go. I don't want my eraser to be too tall. Okay. So the first thing that I want to do is uh, is make the eraser portion. Okay. So I do that by selecting my ellipse, the barrel behind it, and I'm going to do a union. Okay. And that kind of converts that into a nice. Uh, kind of isometric or an oblique uh, cylinder. Okay, now I'm going to take this and our ellipse, and this time I'm going to go to path and do a difference, okay, and that'll cut it away. I'm going to right click on this item and do a duplicate, and I'm going to make it blue. And I'm using the Ubuntu uh, color palette down here, and I'm going to change its transparency to 65%. Okay, and that gives me kind of a metallic bluish uh, looking barrel. Okay, and that's a technique that I learned from Richard. I think it was on episode either 61 or 62 where um, Richard drew a uh, waste paper bin and uh, he drew it using uh, uh, gray gradients and uh, uh, he taught me how to overlay another color just by changing its transparency to get a different color. So I thought that was kind of a, a neat technique to use for this. Okay. So now that I have that, I'm going to go ahead and group it together. And that's going to be my eraser head. The next thing I'm going to do here is I'll select both of these images and we'll go to Path, Union. And I'm going to zoom in on this. And I'm going to go to File, Document Properties, and I'm going to uncheck the snap points that I checked earlier because I don't want to snap anymore. Okay, so we're going to right click on this ellipse, draw one over, right click again, duplicate, and draw one over this way. Okay, now for the one behind, actually the one on top, we'll just change its color so we can see it. And I'm going to zoom in on this a little tighter here. And we'll push this in. Okay, and I don't want to go uh, too wide or too thin on this. Let's see what this looks like. Okay. Um, next, we're going to go to File, Document Properties. Ah, it's not there. File, Inkscape Preferences. I'm going to go to my Steps. 
and I'm going to make sure that I have one for this inset outset because I only want to do an outset by uh, one pixel at a time. Okay, so make sure that you check that, and I'm going to select this dark gray version back here. I'm going to go to object, whoops, and we're going to go to path and do an outset. Okay, that's going to increase the size uh, by a pixel all the way around. Uh, now that I have that, I'm going to select my dark gray. I'm going to select my blue ellipse. We're going to go to path and we're going to do a difference. Okay. Now, hopefully, what I've tried to mimic around here is a raised, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, uh, a raised flange all the way around here. And I hope that kind of looks uh, what it, how it's supposed to look. Okay. <clears throat> now that I have that, I'm going to make it a gradient. So I'm going to highlight it, go to my gradient tool. And I'm going to double click it. Okay, instead of setting up a new gradient, I'm going to select the gradient that I've already drawn. And I'm going to move it vertically. I'm going to hold my control key down so it stays vertical. And you can kind of see how it blends in. I don't want that. So I'm going to kind of unblend it just a little bit. we can get it just a little off kilter so we can see it okay now it does still it does blend in uh, so you have to make sure that I hope you can see it there uh, but you have to make sure that you don't lose sight of it that's why we uh, we shift it just a little bit okay so now I'm gonna right click on this piece and I'm gonna duplicate that and I'm gonna make that black and I think what I'm going to do is highlight the black piece here we're gonna to go to object I'm sorry we're gonna to go to path dynamic offset and I'm gonna pull it in just a little bit so we can shrink it I don't wanna to go too much here and I'm gonna move it out just a little bit okay and we won't know how far uh, we won't know if we've got it right until uh, we blend it up and push it behind so we may have to adjust it here Okay, so I'm going to go to my uh, fill and stroke dialog, and I'm going to give this about a, let's try a 70% uh, for the opacity, and let's give this about a one and a half for a blur, and let's drop that down and see what it looks like. Okay, now what I'm trying to mimic is a little bit of a uh, drop shadow here. Uh, just so that it pulls it out a little bit so we can uh, see it so it doesn't blend in. Uh, realistically, that's not quite right, but I think uh, it'll be just fine. So I'm going to hit undo to bring it back out to the front. And there's one more thing that I have to change on it. So I'm going to right click on this black object, duplicate, and I'm going to turn this one white. We're going to go to our uh, fill and stroke dialog. I'm going to make sure that it's all white. And I think what I'm going to do is uh, give this 100% opacity. And I'm going to give it a radial gradient. So we're going to pick our radial gradient option and we're going to double click the white object. Okay. Now holding my control key down, I'm going to move this down into here. And basically what I'm trying to mimic is a little bit of a, a lens flare. We'll push this up just a little bit. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to select my uh, white object here, and we're going to lower it. I'm going to select my black object. We're going to lower it two times. Okay, now, by drawing that little white piece in here, I'm, what I am hope to mimic is a little bit of a uh, glare. Uh, and what that glare does is kind of highlight the, the rim or the ring uh, around this body, and it kind of blended in the uh, drop shadow that I have in here. So when our lighting is hitting this surface, it, it will kind of blend in. So that's 
the effect that I was going for. Again, it might not just be perfect, but you know it's close enough. And once we get it zoomed out, uh, you'll kind of see what I'm talking about. Okay, so there's our ring. So that was probably the hardest part of the tutorial, actually. So let's go ahead and group that together. And I'm going to right-click and duplicate, holding my Control key down. I'm just going to eye this, slide it out. I'll right-click and duplicate again. And we'll move that one. Again, I'm just eyeing these rings. If you want to get them perfect, what you can do is select each ring. And we can go to our Align and Distribute. And I think we want this one here. That'll uh, make sure that they're evenly centered in between. And I'm going to group this whole thing. And I'm going to slide this out about right there. Duplicate this. And we'll slide this this way. And we'll push this one out a little bit further. Okay, and that's probably pretty good. Okay, so when we zoom out, hopefully what I've done here is kind of modeled some rings around there so it, it looks halfway decent okay so now what I'm gonna do is select my body uh, the flat surface back here select my ellipse and I'm going to do a difference and what I need to do next is select uh, the uh, image back here I'm gonna right click and duplicate that and I'm gonna make that black okay I'm gonna zoom in on this and I'm going to change the height. Let's see, what is my height? My height is 58. I'm going to go, let's try a uh, 56 and a half. And let's change the width. Let's go where I have 79 here. Let's go one more pixel longer. Hit enter. Now, let's try uh, two more pixels. So let's go one more yet. Okay, I'm going to push this out. Okay, I'm going to select my black. I'm going to select the image back here. We're going to go to our align dialog. And I'm going to center that up. Okay, now I'll show you where I'm going with this. Okay, so now what I want to do is go to my fill and stroke dialog. I'm going to give this about a 2 for a blur. And we'll give this about a, let's try a 70. That might be too much. And we'll take this and we'll drop it down. Do we get it behind? Okay. And I'll show you where I'm going with this. Okay. We'll take this eraser. Let's get in a little closer. I'm not actually snapping the eraser. I'm just going to push it in by eye until I get it where I think it needs to be. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. And I'm going to take the eraser and drop it all the way down to the bottom. Okay, and that'll kind of give me a uh, drop shadow uh, for this metal ring here. And again, that's not quite you know, realistic as far as lighting goes but I think it's probably close enough. So, okay. Now we're going to work on this body here. Uh, this one shouldn't take long. It's just like the eraser. I'm going to take these objects here. We'll do a union. I'll take this and this here. We will do a difference. I'm going to right click, duplicate. We'll make this red. And I'll drop its transparency down to 65. Okay, I'll take this, group that together and I'll lower it to the bottom and again holding the control key down we're gonna slide that in we'll zoom in on our area here
okay and that's probably pretty good okay so we have our or we have the eraser we have the metal piece and we have the body so far okay next let's work on the cone okay in order to do the cone we have to take both of these objects go to path and do a union and we're going to select the object after we do that and I'm going to delete the node at the very bottom right here okay and that's going to give us a shape just like this and I'm going to drag this out just like this till we get kind of a triangle okay now this is where it gets a little tricky let me take a swig of water here <clears throat> In Inkscape, we do not have uh, conical gradients. Those are gradients that, uh, that look good on a cone, for example. All we have are linear and radial gradients. So in order to get a conical gradient, you kind of have to fudge it with the interpolation uh, effect. So I'll show you how that works. I'm going to take this object and just give it a, uh, just give it a flat color because we don't need to use the gradient. Okay. I'm going to right click on this object and duplicate it. Then I'm going to go to object, objects to guides. Okay. What that's going to do is delete my duplicated copy and put guides where it used to be. Okay. That's a very handy feature in Inkscape. So now I'm going to grab my Bezier tool and I'm going to snap onto this corner the intersection of where the gradients come. And I'm going to draw this out here about like this. I'm going to hit enter. Okay, I'm going to deselect it, grab my Bezier tool again, and we'll draw this one about out here. I'll hit enter, deselect, grab the Bezier tool again. I'll put this one out here. I'll hit enter, deselect, and we'll snap onto that intersection again, and I'll draw one out here, and I'll hit enter. Okay. Now I'm going to take and hold my control key down and left click on these guides to delete them. I don't need them anymore. And I'm going to highlight each one of these Bezier paths. And I'm going to change uh, the size to, let's try a 3. 3 is a little big. Let's try a 2. Okay. And having them selected, I'm going to go to my fill and stroke dialog, and I'm going to give them uh, rounded caps. Okay. I'm going to select our first one, and I'm going to give it this tan color. So we'll drop that there. I'll select the second one, and I'm going to give that our the Ubuntu gray or the white. I'll select the second one again, and I'll drop that color and the very last one I'm gonna choose this dark tan okay alright now this is where the magic is gonna happen so basically what we're gonna do with the interpolation effect is we're gonna take these four paths and we're going to blend them through each other whoops until we get a gradient okay so I'm gonna select all four holding my shift key down I'm gonna go to the effects and we need to find interpolate generate from path interpolate okay now this is where it gets a little trial and error um, I've got this set for 25 exponent 1 interpolation method 1 and make sure that you have these two boxes checked okay I'm gonna hit apply just to see what it looks like okay and I think it looks pretty good there are some there are some bleed through here uh, I think it's it's okay for the screencast, but in case you don't want that to bleed through, you may want to go 26 here or 27, and uh, and try that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and close out of that. And okay, now interpolation isn't perfect, but you can see that it kind of gave me a a conical gradient, and that's kind of what I was looking for. Uh, another benefit of doing it this way is it kind of leaves these. Uh, you have like these bands in here and it kind of simulates the wood grain uh, of the pencil so that's kind of what I like about that effect okay so I'm gonna take 
this section here, interpolation method, the middle interpolation, and the upper interpolation, and I'm going to group those together. Holding my shift key down, I'm going to arrow up and move it up a step. Okay? Now I'm going to take this blue cone, send it to the front. I'm going to select this interpolation up here, shift key, arrow down to put it back in place. Okay, so you get something about like this. I'm going to select the blue. I'll select the interpolation gradient here. We'll go to Object, Clip, Set. Okay. I no longer need these paths anymore, so I'm going to select all four of them and hit my Delete key. And there is my uh, finished product. Okay. So now what we're going to do is draw some pencil lead on this thing. And I'm not going to use uh, snapping, so I'm just going to eye this. Something about like that. And I'll kind of pull this out just a little bit to mimic some pencil lead there. Okay. Now I'm going to take this and fill it with full black. And I'm going to draw a little bit of a highlight on it. And if it isn't quite right, what you can do is just drop this down just a little bit so it blends in. There we go. Okay, for the highlight, what I'm going to do is grab the Bezier tool. We'll snap onto this corner here. And I'm going to draw out here. We're going to make that white. And I'm going to turn off the stroke. So we're going to remove that stroke. We'll adjust this so it's a little bit bigger. Okay, and I'm going to leave it. Basically what I want it to do is I want it to blend in uh, to this here. If it doesn't, what you can do is uh, put a gradient on it. But I think once we get zoomed out, you're not going to notice it as much. Okay. So I'm going to take this and group that together. So it's all one object. And I'm going to push it, holding my control key down, right into this object over here. And we don't want to go too far with it. We just want to hide it. And again, I'm just eyeing it. I think that looks pretty good. And we're getting very close. So what I'm going to do next is uh, I'm going to highlight all this stuff, right click, do a duplicate, and draw this down here. I'm going to take this object and ungroup it. We'll get rid of this. We'll take this object, we'll go to Object, Clip, and Release so I can get the, the original blue cone. Okay take these things here. I want to hit my ungroup several times. We'll delete this. Whoops, we'll delete that. Now well, you want to make sure that you get the right thing here. Undo. Let me just shift that upward just a little bit so I can get the piece behind it. Okay, and we'll shift down arrow. And we'll get rid of this. I'm going to take all of this and I'm going to group that together and we're going to make that black. Okay? Uh, don't worry about the little white that you see in here because we're going to blend this and uh, move that into our object. So we're going to go to our fill and stroke dialog. And I'm going to give this, uh, let's try a 4. And this gives us about a, I don't know what would look good, maybe a 60. We're going to send that all the way to the bottom. We'll pull that up about right in here. Give it a nice drop shadow. I'll group that together. 
and I'm gonna holding my control key down I'm gonna rotate this and I wanna get it on a 30 degree angle I'm watching my status bar till I get 30 degrees okay and I think we have our pencil okay get that in the middle here now <clears throat> what I'm not going to do let me zoom in on this so we can kinda see where we are graphics kinda slow down a little bit when you're using blurs okay what I'm not going to do is uh, uh, in the PS, uh, PSD toots tutorial let's go back to that you can see that they used uh, Aaron used a uh, reflection down here okay Richard and I have have done reflections like quite a few times in our, in our screencast and I don't want to go ahead and duplicate it so you guys uh, just make sure that you watch one of the other uh, screencasts and you learn how to do a reflection and you can add a reflection if you want to uh, I don't think it's really important to the screencast uh, but that's basically our pencil okay so um, uh, just because you see a uh, uh, tutorial for uh, for Photoshop, GIMP, uh, Corel Draw, Zara, uh, what else is there? Um, even Flash. Uh, it doesn't mean that you can't adapt that to Inkscape. Okay. Uh, a lot of these tutorial sites provide steps for doing it. So you just need to open up Inkscape, uh, drill down through the author's tutorial and try to mimic what they're doing in Inkscape and you'll find that it's it's not that difficult and um, and it really doesn't take that much time so again I want to thank uh, Aaron for providing the tutorial uh, to psdtoots.com uh, make sure that you uh, check out psdtoots.com and some of the other stuff from other authors uh, they've got some great stuff uh, and it's really inspiring to to see what they're doing there uh, I'm not much of an artist compared to these guys uh, so uh, hopefully this looks okay, but that's our screencast. So thank you for watching. I'm HeathenX.